Devin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me on and congrats on your success and the cool things that you guys are doing over here. Appreciate it, man. We're trying slowly but surely. Um, yeah. And for those who do end up watching this on YouTube, I'm well aware how much I'm sweating right now. I'm in uh, South Florida this week. So uh, a little bit of a different backdrop, but feeling good nonetheless. Um, so yeah, man. So I heard about your story first from the Super Coffee Brothers, Jim and Jake DeSico. And I felt like our conversation took like a hard right turn as soon as I heard about you bear crawling a marathon. <laughs> it's abs so my first question is is how how on earth did this even like come into existence? Yeah, man. So I was in England um, on a, on a campaign we were doing with Jim Shark, and uh, I, I met this guy Ross Edgley. Uh, and he just does really extraordinary things. He swam around Great Britain in 157 days. He yeah. uh, climbed the height of Mount Everest on a rope in 24 hours. He, I was I actually wasn't aware of that one. <laughs> yeah, he, he's like he's the ultimate. He's very smart and honestly one of the nicest humans you'll ever meet in your life. And and I got to know him for a week because we're you know we're climbing to the highest point in England and you know we're we're with each other and I'm just hearing him talk and he's just such a smart dude. And like, you know, we were like, yo, let's he's like, Dev, you know, you're you're an athlete. Like you should do something for purpose this year. Um hmm. like give back. And I was like, what do you mean by that? And like we were just talking about like mentality and just like, you know, perseverance and all this fun stuff. And and he's like, dude, you got a bear call marathon or something. And I was, and he's like, I've seen you bear call around and like, you look so natural at it. He's like, you got a bear call marathon. And I'm like, and literally we're in the Lake District of England. And I just, I'm like, yeah, really? And I like bear call like a hundred yards. And I like turn back and I'm like, I think I can do this actually. And like, <laughs> and I'm like showing back and then he's like, you got this man, you got it. And like, I came back to, back to New York and I just, honestly, I told way too many people. <laughs> I was like so excited about it. And so I told a bunch of people and like, I would say the next week I like bear called my first mile and I was like thinking, which like, in itself is yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah. It took me like an hour and I was just like, dang, I might've like bitten off way more than I could chew. Like my wrist <laughs> was like hurting, like everything was hurt. I was like, this is like the hardest workout I've ever done. But I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to like, I really want to like it, having a purpose for working out as you know, as an athlete, like it makes it yeah. so much more right? Like when, when we're in the training room, you know, playing college football, like that's the fun part, you know, training all week, going to practice, like lifting, being with the boys, like just right. doing it. And then game day is like, yeah, that, that amps you up. But like the process and the training is definitely the part that I'm addicted to and I love. And so yeah. having like a, a, a goal, but then like really having a process that you're going to be addicted to, um, was kind of my my main thing and then you know obviously there was intrinsic and extrinsic motivators in it right yeah. you know it was internally my you know my father took his life when I was 16 so I really did want to raise awareness for suicide I've never been able to speak about it up until two years ago and like I was just like I was, I was almost like embarrassed of it or like um, I just didn't mm -hmm. want anyone to know and like people would ask like oh what happened to your dad and I'm like oh he passed away like I would never talk about it so this like really helped me personally just like yeah get things out my back and like just put it out in the world which drastically just helped my personal health um and then it also like it inspired others you know like you can talk about things that you're going through even as a male you know us growing yeah. up um for me at least uh you know you always see like this male like this like ego in place where you know oh don't talk about it. just go grab a beer or just forget about it like tough through it but like exactly that's basically the right thing to do right like you do you should want to talk about it you should you know talk about it to like get it off your chest and you feel much lighter so that was one of the motivators um and then you know raising it um and then having like fit ops and the foundation you're raising money for um a, a foundation i truly believe in we take veterans put them through three week training course and they come out personal trainers and so like there's two motivators there right and that yeah was a recipe for success and yeah so i ended up completing it november 1st in 20 hours and 48 minutes below freezing started in brooklyn ended in central park i didn't even know people were going to show up uh by the time we got to central park um there was just like hundreds if not thousands of people just 
all there, news stations, everything. I was like, it, it was it was the most incredible moment I think I've probably ever had. Even like winning a national championship in football in high school, like this, right. was like this was like wow. Um, so that was really cool. And then to to your point of like this podcast, which I, I just thought I'd share with you guys, like yeah, I picked twenty people to to walk with me um, okay. for the entire marathon. Um, there, there was a list of over 500 people that have reached out physically with an email and said, like, I want to walk with you this whole way, but you know, oh, it was amazing. yeah, it was crazy. But I was like, I'm going to get too distracted if I have hundreds of people coming with me. So I broke it down to 20 people, 20 yeah. people in my circle that have all played sports in their life. And I chose all former athletes for the simple reason of fourth quarter mentality. If at oh, some point it. during the race or during the crawl, I flip my fucking shit and I go nuts. They're going to understand it because they've been in sports. They understand the fourth quarter mentality. Some people on your team need to be left alone. Some people need to be amped up. Some people, you know, everyone has their different uh, motivators when they're doing it. And so oh, I, yeah. they, would all, um, they would all understand it regardless of what mentality. Sometimes I was happy. Sometimes I flip out. I threw my headphones at one point. Like there's so many different things, but I know that they could handle that emotional, um, like the differences that I was going to have. So that was kind of cool. I thought I'd share that. Oh, it's amazing. Well, yeah. and, and you're absolutely right. Like a crowd in, in some ways can like give you a lot of adrenaline, but like, yeah. It can also be distracting, and I and I have to imagine like the place that you had to go to to get that done. Like there's yeah. there was probably no room for extraction. You needed just yeah. folks who were gonna like help you like get that next step. Yeah. Um. And and actually, you know, like to go back to the beginning, like with something like this, there's no frame yeah. of reference. Like yeah. I don't think there's anyone who's ever attempted anything like this, at least to my understanding. So like, no. how did you start mapping out like a training program to even get your body in a place where it could, it could do something like this? Yeah. Well, luckily, like, you know, I, I have played sports my whole life and, and, you know, I am in the health and wellness industry. So I am surrounded yeah. by just experts around the world. So, you know, it's just me making calls, training with people and like just getting doctors' opinions, top coaches' opinions, dietitians' opinions, everyone's opinion on it. Some doctors are like, there's no way you're going to come out of this without like ruining yourself for life. Some are like, it's impossible. Some are like, Deb, you, you got this. You're a psychopath. Like, you're definitely going to like push through this. So, right. like, it was cool seeing everyone's, but then it's, it's really just like my gut feeling and under, and like knowing my body, right? I know how hard I can push myself. I would say if you're playing college sports into professional, you mm -hmm. have a different mindset. It's not about how hard you can push yourself. It's more about recovery and like taking care of yourself. And so, yeah, we're going to go balls to the wall every time, you know, I go into a session, but how am I going to recover? How am I going to sustain that energy? You know, so now getting into diet and like understanding I have to eat more fats because I'm training for so long and that's what my body's going to burn or understand like, mm -hmm. You know, my wrists are really sore today or I have blisters. Do I just push through that three, four miles this day or do I just let it rest? And like, I would have to just kind of make that gut feeling. And yeah, some days I would literally go in to do five miles. And after a mile, I, my hands would be completely bleeding with blisters. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to get it. So then I'd do another mile on my fist and then I'd be like, okay, now my fists are bleeding. What do I do? And then I'd have to go home and take like two days <laughs> off. Yeah, it was crazy. Like it's just going back and forth. And on top of that, you're training all year round outside. It's freezing outside, especially in New York, right? So it's like, right. it's just taking different factors, but just having a non-negotiable mentality to complete the task at hand. Hmm. So how early on did you start training for this? Like, cause, okay, because you did it. A year yeah. A year out. Year. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 and what, what were you, what were you doing from like a recovery standpoint? Because like, okay, a marathon is daunting enough. Right. And I think yeah. most folks would say like, Oh, I'm going to give myself a year to try and get yeah. ready for like this. So, some people do that for a half, half marathon. Right. We're talking yeah. about you bear crawling it. So, you know, like what, what did your kind of like recovery routine look like? Yeah. So, um, if I had blisters, I would put zinc cream on it and that kind of helps like harden calluses quicker. Okay. okay. I'm not, I, I, I don't know, don't quote me on that, but it's like something in regards to that, whatever. And yeah. so I would use that, it works for me. Um, yeah. If I was sore, um, I would, you know, I, I would massage, you know, use a Theragun, sit in the sauna, get the blood flowing, you know, walk it out just to do different exercises, just to keep my body continuing to recover. Sleep, 
get like as much sleep as possible, especially like if I'm tired, my grandma always told me, she's like, if you're tired, sleep, you know what I mean? So I always yeah. have that in the back of my head, like, yo, I'm not tired right now. I'm going to get another hour of sleep or whatever it is. So that, and then yeah. I actually, did, I ended up getting, um, exomes, which is like a lab formulated, uh, style of stem cell. Totally. Oh legal. yeah. Can we talk about this? Cause I, I saw that yeah. you did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So exomes, um, they inject like 5 billion cells into your bloodstream. And basically the best way to explain it is they're kind of like mini walkie talkies going into your body. So if all of a sudden my ear starts hurting, um, they'll send out a signal and be like, Hey, go fix the ear. Or if my shoulder's hurting, they'll send out a signal and go do that or whatever's hurting. And so yeah. it just helps speed up your recovery much faster. It's not steroids. It's just helping with the recovery process, which like I said before, is literally the most important part of training for something like that. And it's, it's your own stem cells, right? Um, no, th these are actually lab formulated ones. Um, oh, okay. And, Interesting. Yeah. So the problem with me doing regular stem cell compared to this is they would have to go get fat from my body. And I don't, I'm like 4% body fat or something. So it's like kind of hard to do that. And then yeah. also we're, we were coming up close to the race and they didn't think it would, it would um, impact me that much if I did it like this close to the race. So they're like, mm -hmm. they kick in faster. They'll start healing you faster. Um, and yeah, so we went that route and it, it definitely helps. Like you definitely, Imagine just bear crawling for five miles and then the next day you're like, wow, I'm not really sore, <laughs> but you just bear wow. for five miles for like three hours and you're not sore. And so that's, I think the biggest benefit. I was just able to grind, grind, grind every day. Wow. So how, how often were you, were you getting that done? I only, I only got it done twice. So it's like okay. every six weeks you get it done. Um, yeah, it, it was, uh, it was cool though. Definitely, uh, definitely something I would recommend to anyone like, you know, has injuries or trying to recover faster pro athletes, the jets, giants, like a lot of the guys up here that that's how I got introduced to it. But, um, yeah, there it's, it's definitely something for elite athletes that yeah. want to recover faster. Oh, it's amazing, man. And you, yeah. and you notice like a real, like tangible difference. In recovery. I felt like I'm not kidding. One day I, it was probably like three weeks after I got it done. I'm like, I'm not feeling anything. Next day I wake up and I'm like, holy shit. Like I really feel like, like Popeye right now. Like I feel like I could actually run through a football. I felt so good. Like no, I didn't feel any aches and pains. I like my energy was there. My mentality was there. I felt like a brick wall. Like it, it felt good. Oh, it's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So, so with this training, you talked about the first time you did it. Was it a mile? The first mile. And that I took would, an hour. Yep. Took an hour. Then I would get into a little bit longer and a little bit longer. Um, then I would, I would try to do speed. So I'd implement, you know, speed training, um, like bear crawl speed, meaning like how fast you do a mile in. So I got it down to 23 minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which is much. And that then, is uh, incredible. Yeah. And then, and then I started going onto the treadmill. I would basically just like throw on a podcast or something. And I would just like go on the treadmill for like four minutes, bear crawl nonstop at like two and a half to three speed, okay. and stand up, break and go back down. I would break for like 30 seconds. So getting into that, I, I, I ended up getting up to five miles on the treadmill. After that, it's just like so boring. Just well, like, yeah, yeah man, not, that's so much time. Yeah, it's a lot of time. It's a lot and of it's you're not even getting to like enjoy the view. Yeah, you're just looking at like this rubber mat. Like <laughs> it's not fun. And so I got up to five miles. Then I switched to going outside and doing laps around the um, around the football field. So if you right. go to the perimeter about four and a half times in the football field, that's about a mile. So mentally, you're like ah, four and a half laps. That's not so bad. And so now I go and I do. 20 laps and I'm like, okay, cool. Like it's not as bad as being on a treadmill for four hours. You know what I mean? Right. Then after that, as we start getting closer to the marathon, I started switching to the cement around the track with actual, the padding I was going to do because look, you're in New York city, right? You're yeah. On, you're, you're on concrete tar, whatever it is. Um, and then that's, that's, that was like the final part. Um, I ended up getting up to 13 miles. That's the longest I went. And then obviously the, the 26.2 miles on the November 1st. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Maybe. So, you know, was there any point, like you, you kind of said when you did that first mile, I was like, man, maybe I bit off more than, than I, than I could chew yeah. at any point where you like, shit, I don't know if I'm really going to be able to do this. Like, did you, did you ever have that moment where you really were like, this might be impossible? I think, 
at one point someone's like, you should just do a half marathon. And I was just like, fuck that. Hmm. I'm going all in on this. I like, I just, when I have a new challenge coming up, which I can't say it yet, but like, even oh, okay. when, even, yeah, which is, it, it's actually, I think going to be way harder. Um, really? Yeah. It's going to be way harder for sure. Uh, that, sounds, that sounds like episode number two. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll get you in on that. Uh, awesome. But even when I decided that I was going to do this number two challenge, yeah, for some reason, I'm able to just click into a flow state where I'm hmm. so hyper-focused and there's nothing that's going to convince me. I don't care what videos I watch, what people say, you know, what negative things or you can or whatever, like that actually amps me up. It's kind of like reverse psychology for me. So like if someone's like, yo, you, you're not going to do this or it sounds impossible, like I'm going to find a way to get it done regardless of the situation. And I immediately go into this like non-negotiable mentality. Hmm. And, and that yeah. flow state, is that something that you, you kind of like developed with all this like work and hours that you put in, in that first challenge, or are there other things that you're kind of doing, you know, in, in your day to day to like, kind of like yeah. improve your ability to tap into that? Yeah, you know what? Like, I think I've had a flow state, like, been able to tap into my flow state ever since I was actually like a young kid. Like, I used to work with my dad. Um, he used to like build houses and like developments or whatever, and and I would like go and like scrap metal and like you know help him out. And like, he would always tell me like, get your hands out of your pocket. I would never want to see your hands in your pocket. So like, I was always like working and always like trying to um like clean up the area and just getting this like flow of like just getting it done and yeah. I think that like from doing it from such a young age and like having like okay don't have my hands in my pocket so i can always work i can always have there's always something to do and mm -hmm. then getting shit done and like getting in that flow state i think i've had it like since i was a kid to be honest um but yeah. yes sports as well right like what yeah. you, you know like getting in the zone whether you know whether you, whether you're at um at, at home plate or you know you're, you're about to you know do a go route on a on a football field or you know you have the ball and you're the point guard and you have to like you're like okay i'm gonna I, there's like 20 seconds left i gotta drive the hoop like you get into the flow state by playing sports and i yeah. think it then leads into like these challenges i'm doing or honestly business as well yeah no and i, I can definitely relate to that um it's funny, like I, there's there's certain moments of like my own like athletic career that like I just remember so definitively being in that flow state where you, even at the time you realize like, all right, there's kind of something else going on right now. Yeah, like yeah. Every, everyone is moving slower. I'm seeing things crystal clear. Like it's just right. coming so easy to me. Um, and it's funny, like th there's a lot of folks who've probably actually never tapped into that. Right. Like if, you know, it, it doesn't have to come from, from sports, like you were saying, yeah. but that is one of those benefits. Like you kind of understand the benefit of getting into like extreme focus. Exactly. And I have a good book that anyone that's listening, if you want to read it, it's called, I just finished it. It's called Stealing Fire. Yeah. By Stephen Cutler. Have you read that? I've read that. It's great. great. It's uh, this is it. Oh shit, it's playing right now. But like this one, if, if people yep. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a really, really good. Um, it just de it it describes like how different people and situations are able to develop flow state quick, which is cool. So, yeah, we'll have to. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure to link to that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so for you, you know, wh what was the hardest part of training for this? Right. I mean, the physical demands are insane. And I, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The time, like, like I said, like. I'll push myself every session to the max. Like there's no shot, like whether it's playing sports and going to practice, pushing yourself there in a game or training for a marathon, like bear crawling, I'm going to push myself. Um, it's the time allocation to get it yeah. done because I'm wait, I'm, you know, I, I still have, you know, DML holdings to run and investments and, and advisements and, and doing all these things with different companies. So I still have a full day job, right. right. That I have to like get done. And so where's the time then to bear crawl? Well, it starts at 2 a.m. in the morning and that's where you find time. So two to seven. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Holy, all right. So let's dive into this because there's a lot of people um, are like, man, I don't have time to get to the gym. Oh, like, yeah. I, would, I would love, I would love to go for a 30 minute run. Um, okay. So you're, so you're, day, so you just make time. Your day starts at 2 a.m. when you're doing these bear crawl sessions. I, I, yes, hundred percent. Yeah. You can definitely make time and yeah, you might have to go to bed a little bit earlier. You might mm -hmm. oh. You can't get a beer with your friend or, oh, you can't go out to dinner or whoops, you can't do that. But 
hey, that's the sacrifice you're going to make. So yeah, I would go to bed at like nine. I would wake up at two or three, bear mm-hmm. call, and then I would go into a pull on a pull on like day of work. And like now you're also adding in um, interviews, news stations, podcasts, PR, yeah. all that added into your normal day plus bear calling. So yeah, last year was unbelievable outside of COVID for me in general. Like it was just a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So how much sleep are you getting then on a, on a consistent basis? Because there's, there's like the one school of thought it's like, Hey, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah, and then yeah. you kind of already alluded to, it's like, man, you feeling tired. Like listen to your body sleep. Yeah. So for you, like what, what is your kind of like consistent schedule look like? I used to have that mentality, by the way, like, you know, yeah. no money in bed, sleep when you're dead. Like, you know what I mean? Like you don't need to sleep. Yep. Right now. And like that whole Gary Vander Chuck look at it. And like, I'm not, it's not bad, but it's definitely not sustainable to do that. Right. Like you definitely yeah. need to have balance or your cortisol levels are eventually going to diminish and like, they're not really going to be there. And so hmm. maybe in my early twenties, I'm 28 right now. I would, I would kind of had that, like, whatever, I'll do it. But like, as you start to like evolve and I guess, but be, you know, become a little bit smarter and things, you're like, I'm going to be able to have this energy for the rest of my life if I can just balance it right now. So to, uh. answer, it, to answer it, like, I, I still try to do like six, seven hours of sleep now. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, just go and crush the day. But sleep is super, uh, super, super important. Yeah. Um. So one of the most insane things about this to me, the, the more I learned about it, the more I was just blown away. Yeah. You, you started this at, you started the actual marathon at 5 p.m. Yeah. Is that correct? 5 p.m. Because I, cause, yeah. all right, let me, I don't want to tell your story for you, but I, I mean, it yeah. damn near took almost, you did under 24 hours, but it was like 20 hours, right? 20 hours. 20 and 48 hours, 48 minutes. minutes. Yep. And you st- so why why start at five p.m. and why not start at like two p.m. kind of like you've been doing during the uh, the course of a lot of your training? Yeah. So as people tell you you can't do things, I start to do things on my own end to um, lessen their their um, their input. So like to, mm. to lower my risk for for them to actually be right. And so people are like. You have to strategize it. There's no way you're not going to have enough time. It's cold. It's Halloween, like all these things. And so I'm like, I'm actually taking <laughs> that. Halloween. I'm educating myself on it. Like, okay, they're right. They're right. They're right. They're wrong. I did my, I did my research on this. And so then the three things that they're right about, I'm going to do my research and I'm going to strategize it to the T. So I know exactly what I'm eating, when I'm eating it, where I'm crawling, like where I'm stopping. I mean, I've gone through Google maps <laughs> I don't know how many times to understand every single turn that I'm taking to mentally right. prepare myself. Cause if I can do that and you can strategize on something that seems impossible, but you're like, you educate yourself, you strategize and then you execute. I think you're in a, a great position to actually complete the task at hand. So that's what I did. And I just, I was looking at the streets and mentally you prepare yourself. Cause you're like, okay, I'm only going to be over the Brooklyn bridge. It's only going to take me 25 minutes if I only stop two times and mm. like buy my shoes or whatever it is. And so that's the mentality I had. And I just kept running it through, running it through my brain nonstop until I literally just had the map in my brain. And then it's day of now. It's just, now it's just, uh, it's either you're going to fucking do it or you're not. And me going into that day, I'm doing it. There's non-negotiable. I mean, I, I remember it a little bit, but it was, I was definitely in a crazy flow state for 24 hours. Really? Yeah, maybe even 48. Even after the race, I was still like, like kind of like tripping out. And I was like, okay, got, do I stop yet or what do I do? So, okay, there's so much to this. Like, what, what did you do about like sustained energy and nutrition? Like, how did you approach that over the course of the race? Yeah, so a lot of, mostly like you think about eating and, and, uh, and fueling your body, you're like, all right, carbs, like you have a football game the next day, you're like, load up on pasta, which makes sense. Right. But that pasta is going to burn, right, Uh, in those couple hours. Like your body's going to burn carbs if you're doing like a short burst of training. But if you're doing a long burst, your body actually doesn't really go after carbs. You start going after fat and like that. So what we started doing, my mom was actually making them. um, It was like a mix of honey and coconut butter. And she would melt it down and then freeze it. And then I would eat those like throughout the race. Um, oh, wow. and, and it would actually like help with energy. Um, 
I would have caffeine every once in a while, but it was really the fat that was like keeping me sustained through it. I might have had a couple bananas. I threw up about 57 times. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Um, yeah, but definitely like the, the, the good fats was, was helping me fuel. And then our dietitian, Melanie, she did an amazing job on like scheduling everything out, where each stop was, um, you know, what I was eating at each stop, how much, how much water I'm allowed to drink. Like, cause if you drink, a, if you drink a whole, you know, bottle of water mid bear crawl, you're going to throw it up. No question about it. Right. So I would only be able to drink like a little sip of water. And then I'd go and then I'd have my little um, like butter balls or whatever you want to call them. And then I'd go and then I have a little bit more water. Then I'd have a banana. So like it was all strategically planned. And yeah. it was, and the key, the biggest key about when you're training for a big event um, and then you get to game day, don't change anything you've been doing. Like mm. whatever I was doing for the three months prior is exactly what I was doing the race of. I didn't like change. Oh, I was going to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like change it drastically because, you know, like everyone's DMing like, no, you got to do this for a marathon or take this gel because I ran the New York Marathon. I'm like, but did you bear call the New York Marathon? So like <laughs> the gel is probably not going to work. You know what I mean? So like that's, those are like the different things that you have to like, I don't know, not deal with, but just like look at, uh, you know, with nutrition and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that, that answers one of the questions I was going to ask you, but then the, the throwing up is, yeah. is that a byproduct of exhaustion? Cause the other thing I'm thinking too, is like the whole like position that you're in while you're like exerting all this effort, like you're yeah. leaning over and your head's like lower than your ass. Like what, what was the cause of all the nausea and people are like I, the fucking I marathon, think, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, um, from being in that position because all last year, I'll tell you something that no one really knows except like my friends. <clears throat> so all last yeah. year, since I was bear crawling, I would, you know, eat and like live my life accordingly, obviously train. But like when I would eat at night or like midday or honestly, whenever, I would actually like throw up the food right after I would eat it. And like, it's wow. not because I wanted to, it's because my body was like making me. I was like, Fuck. and then I'd have to like kind of gross, but I'd have to like swallow it back down. And I'm like, what the? fuck is going on with me right now like why right and ever since i stopped the bear crawl i stopped having that completely but all last year like all my friends like dude Devin just keeps throwing up what's his problem and i'm like i don't know i can't stop throwing up and i really think it's because i was in that position for so long almost every day um it was doing that wow yeah kind of crazy i'll show you another picture real quick and this yeah. so this was caused from I just found this out three days ago. So I was, I've been having like these headaches, uh, the last like couple weeks. And then like mm -hmm. my neck got sore and I'm like, what the fuck? And like, I'm fine. Like I'm throwing backflips. I'm still working out regularly, but like, I'm feeling like a little yeah. weird. And so I went to the doctors and he scans my neck. Um, and I think you have like seven, this is six or seven, um, uh, on your, on, on your neck or whatever. So it's like Verte one, uh, vertebrae. Yeah. 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 Dish. Um, yeah. yeah sorry, I lost that. And so he's like looking at it and he's like, Oh boy. And I'm like, damn, I definitely slipped a disc or something. What's going on? And he's like, no, he's like, you have military neck. And I'm like, what does that mean? He goes from your head being down so much, your, your neck, if you look at it, right. It's supposed to be like curved. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is completely straight. And that's because when I was bear crawling, my head would be like this. So oh, as wow. you see, right? Like here, let's see if you can Oh see. yeah. So like the top is my neck, it's completely straight, and this bottom is curved. Oh wow. It's curved, yeah, yeah. So like me bear crawling for an entire year actually impacted me. Oh impacted me from like like a spinal perspective. There that it is. That is crazy. Isn't that cool? You see how the bottom has how Yeah, 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 yeah. You can really see the arch at the lower yeah, end. Yeah. And mine is like completely straight. And you would think like, oh, your neck is supposed to be straight. It's actually supposed to be arched a little bit. The other impact of this, people looking down at their phone. So what the oh, what yeah. was saying is keep your head up, guys, because you're going to develop a straight neck, which will then lead to like headaches and like future issues. Oh, wow. So what can you do to kind of recover from that? Is, so, is there any Oh, shit. Oh, I thought I had them. They're upstairs. All right. So there's a couple <laughs> things you can do. One thing you can do is stop looking at your phone so much. Mm -hmm. Or if you are looking at your phone, hold it out in front of you. Oh, okay. um, the other one is like when you're sleeping, make sure to just have one pillow and, and your neck should like kind of lay back 
kind of like this and that'll help oh, wow. in the back position. And if you're like, like 20, 30, 40 years old, like you can fix this within like six weeks. It's just like, oh, you, okay. can, you can do exercises where you're like putting a weight on, um, like a, like a strap on your neck and like doing a weight exercise like that. And yep. then, um, the other one, which I got to send you these, uh, it's like these glasses that you wear, but when you wear them, <laughs> I, lo- you, I love it already. When you look straight, you it's like has a mirror in them so you're really just looking down it's oh no way but like it's reflecting everything that's like below you so like i could literally be like texting like this <laughs> <laughs> and so like yeah i wear them at night and my girlfriend's like <laughs> I, I love I love, I love that those exist. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> That's amazing. And any other like long lasting injuries that kind of came out of this? Like I would have to think like the, your yeah. shoulders, man, and your wrists. Yeah, my wrists, I, I actually, I had like a, um, like a hairline fracture, I guess. Hmm. But again, I was like in the doc's office. I'm like, I feel great. And I'm like doing a handstand in the office. He's like, I don't know, man. It says that you have a hairline fracture. So you should probably <laughs> chill a little bit. But it feels right. good. yeah. Besides that, I think I, I did a I did a pretty good job like preparing, you know, using my resources, strategizing, and then just like executing and like being smart about it. And I think that's just like the mentality you have to have, and you just have to like cross every T, dot every I, and make sure you um, you don't overlook anything. It's it's such like a testament that the human body is yeah. just capable of so much adaption. Like, you know what I mean? It's like all like. This challenge, I can't wait to hear what you're going to do next. Um, Just some of these other like incredible feats of endurance and strength. It's like, man, like the human body can really do almost anything. It really is. It's just all in the mind, you know, just like pushing your body. Think about this, right? Like when you go under anesthesia, your body, like your legs and your ligaments are completely um, flexible. Like I, I can't take my toe and touch it to my face right now, but... If I'm knocked out, you can. And hmm. that's and that's because your your mind is telling your leg, like, I can't do that right now. But it's really got like a, it's got like a governor that prevents you from Exactly. But realistically, yeah. when you're like under and you're not thinking about it, because you can't, because you're like under anesthesia or whatever, they can definitely touch your foot to your face, like no problem. Like and you'll create like you, you'll do things that you never even thought your body could, but that's because your mind's not preventing you from doing it. Yeah. It's like, it's just inhibition, you know, it just, um, man, that's so crazy. So, so going back to like the actual day of, right. So I think you said the most you ever did in training was the 13 miles for you, you know, on that day that you did it. I mean, what was the toughest part of the 26 miles or did it go in waves? Yeah, there was one, there was one part where I kind of got out of my flow for a second. Um, it was right after I got over the Brooklyn bridge. It's about 1am in the May, one thirty in the morning. Um, and how cold, how cold was it? You're, you're over the river. You're like, the, like yeah, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like super cold. Everyone's freezing. Like I'm definitely like hearing some people are like, yo, should we just go home now? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, like, damn, it's, it's taking a little long time now. Uh, right, right, right. But like we get over and my headphones die. And, oh no. And I was just like, fuck. <laughs> I just took my headphones and I like threw them across the street. I was like, I need headphones. I need to listen to something. I'm going to go nuts. And I'm like, oh, why is it so cold outside? I'm just like going nuts. Yeah, and, man. Like I had a freak out for like three minutes. And then I was like, okay, all right, guys, let's go. <laughs> and then I just like got back into it. But I needed that like little freak out. And then, yeah, but that was really it. And then like when you get to Central Park, you know, the sun's now coming up. It's like getting a little bit warmer. Now like I would be down and I would look up and like every time I would go down and up, like 10 new people would just show up. And then like by the end, there's just so many. So you're like, okay, I got this. And people are like, David, only a mile left. And I'm like, fuck, I'm here. I'm finally here. Like, thank God. And like, wow through that and then like you're you're just going 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 and they're like Devin this way this way keep going and people are screaming at you in Central Park let's let's go just like amping you up and then like adrenaline is like there you know and like you go you push through it and yeah it was like it was definitely super incredible so like 
how would you describe what happened like the that last the second 13 miles right because i mean did, did you know when you did that first 13 miles like oh I, I have enough in the tank where i can keep going but just in terms of like i don't want to kill myself yeah, yeah. or were you kind of like man i'm hoping that like <laughs> i figured this out right and when game day happens like i just have enough in the tank to get all the way to 26. exactly i was like there's no shot i'm not finishing this i was like yeah okay. i was yeah i was like i'm doing it and then once you get to 13 you're like all right halfway it's all downhill from here right and you're like okay sec like now it's third quarter let's go you know what i mean yeah. Upper East Side was tough just because like people definitely don't like pick up after their dogs up there. So like you're literally dodging like dog doo doo and like that's not fun. And, like, <laughs> and it's small and it was just like it, you know it is what it is. Harlem's the best place by the way. Like Harlem yeah. has the most hospitable people. They're so nice. They were like coming out on their stoop. They're like yo, let's go. Like just amping us up. Upper East Side's weird. And then, yeah, Central Park, like I said, that was just like the amp period. And that's the last six miles. Yeah, that was the last six miles. So. I love that you're talking about bear crawling through neighborhoods that most people take cabs yeah, to yeah. and from. Like, oh, yeah, the Upper East Side's fine. Harlem was nice. Uh, you know, South, South Central Park's actually pretty clean. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's because you're looking at the ground of New York City the whole time. You see gum, you see, you know, dog dude, and you see just like everything. And you're like, yeah, man. And puddles and stuff. It's, yeah, it's you, you it, a perspective from a whole nother world. Yeah. Okay. L last, last question on this, because I can keep peppering yeah. with questions on this all day. But like, yeah. what, what were you doing to kind of like chunk up? Like, how, how were your rest periods organized? Like, how long were you going? How long were you resting? Because I mean, yeah. 20 hours of output is insane yeah. most people can't stay awake 20 hours <laughs> yeah it, yeah it was definitely tough drink super coffee and you can but yeah, super yeah. coffee come on folks support super this coffee, guy. come on no i um I, I split it up into a mile and a half each so you do 18 rounds um and that's how i looked at it so i was like okay i'm gonna do 18 rounds i'll do a mile and a half each i want to try to get a mile and a half within 60 minutes each time and it'll like somewhere around there and then you include rest into all that like okay you, you're going for like a mile and a half you have to take like a two minute break you know what i mean and so like you're yeah. like okay you're going 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 they have to rewrap my hands because they're like bleeding at this point there's blisters all over so they're like rewrapping i'm going um and so yeah i i anticipated i wanted to get it done in under 24 and and that was like with a ton of breaks god forbid and yeah mm. we push through it so 20, 21 or 20 48 was the time smoked it and yeah what were you what were you doing to like for your hands i mean i'm sure they had to have been built up so much dude, over the last year have it. I'll show you. oh so, yes perfect dude I, I still like have this like so i have gloves that um where are they that like gym shark made and then oh nice yeah and I'll, actually they're not in here but then i would put like so this is like a like a shoe um sole and i would oh, okay. get the sole out and then i would place it on my hand like this yeah and then like that so there would be second skin underneath then we would two tape and then this on top and then do like another wrap and then put the gloves on and then put like one more padding like it was yeah. pretty thick like you have to have it um right. Or you're done after like 100 feet. You know what I mean? So that's what like this was, but it's pretty thick. You know? Yeah, that is thick. Yeah. Well, and, and like I mean, what, what what about like your fingertips, man? Yeah. That, just, yeah. Like that, like you know, on the on the on a field turf, I'm like, okay, like I can see how that how, that's probably terrible too, actually. No, but like, thinking about like I, I didn't have to put the fingertips on for the turf. But oh, okay. For the cement, I didn't yeah. put them, I didn't put them on for the first time, like when I was like training, and dude, every single finger all blisters blood like every single one so for like three weeks, no for like two weeks out of my training i literally like could barely like text i was just like they were just bleeding so i didn't do that again i got these these um these like finger condom looking things and like they're used to like count money and so i put those on put like this tape around it and then we would right, have I know to exactly what you're talking about. yeah so it was a, it was a it was a process that's amazing that's amazing yeah. um so you talked a little bit about the motivation um, and, and one of the things, and I appreciate you, you know, saying like, look, man, I had to like open up and I addressed yeah. something that I hadn't been willing to talk about for a long time. Um, I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And I've tried to talk about this uh, on past episodes. I, you know, my, my dad suffered from mental illness. Um, and for me, for a very long time, that's something that I refused to like talk yeah. about or address. Right. Um, so I, I related to your story a lot in that way. For you, I guess, 
if you don't mind talking about it, like what, what kind of um, occurred where you finally felt like uh, I need to open up about this or I need to talk to someone about this? Like how, do, how did that process happen for you? Yeah. So I've been, uh, when I, I went to school um, at Long Island University um, mm-hmm. and I dropped out when I was a junior and I dropped and I was on a full scholarship. I was playing football and whatnot, tango to a little baseball. Um, and I just like, didn't see like the vision of like staying in school afterward. Mm-hmm. Right. And like, I immediately like went into like, like work mode. Um, I was like promoting and bartending on the side in Long Island at like these bars and clubs and whatnot. And so I was making like extra cash that way. And I, you know, I was doing pretty good at it. And that like kind of gave me some motivation, honestly. And I was just like, I could, I can make a career out of something in the restaurant, nightclub industry. Like I enjoy it. I like it. I'm good at it. Cool. Out. See you later. Um, And at that point I left college. So I was, I don't know, I was a junior. And so I was under 20. I I was like 19 or 20. Um, And I immediately went into like work mode, but when I went into work mode and I was still dealing with like my dad, like passing away when I was 16. And so like when I went into work mode, I was still in this like super driven, like tunnel vision, got to take care of my family, got to, you know, got to figure it out or no one else's type of mentality. Yeah. When you like, it's not so bad to go into that mentality. I'm definitely still in it, but there was a turning point in the last like three years where the thing, like me being in that tunnel vision was impacting people around me. And I wasn't even Mm. realizing it. You get in a tunnel vision and you just start go, go, go. And you're not worried about anyone else's feelings or anything. It's going to haunt you and it's going to impact you eventually. And so that's what happened. And like a couple of my best friends came to me and like, dude, like, you got to chill out a little bit. Like you're going way too hard mm. impacting some of us. And I was like, shit. And so I started talking to a couple people. One was like this spiritual, like woman, um, like, I don't know, like, like healer. And then like, for, like yeah. traumas. and then I, I went in and spoke with her and dude, I literally just started bawling, crying. Like I was just like so emotional and mm. it like helped me. Like I, I have never done that. I was just like, what is going on? And she's like, you have a lot to get off your chest. Like you've gone through a lot, like you need to like let it out. And so I just like spilled the beans to her and like that really, really helped. And then, and then I started talking to this guy, Johnny Martin, um, who, who does this for a couple, um, really cool individuals. And, you know, so he was recommending, I started talking to him and I still talk to him, you know, daily, weekly. Um, and like that, that really helped me like open up and like, understand a whole nother side of yo you don't have to just like be non-stop all the time you know you you can be you can have emotions you can you can like be a human for a second you know what i mean and like yeah. th- i think that like me going through that like three years ago was definitely a really good factor of me doing the bear crawl as well and like help me kind of push through it um yeah I, I think that was definitely a turning point yeah it's um And you, you kind of already said as much like there is this, and I'm, you know, miss misconception or this perception that like, Hey, you know, tough guys don't have emotions or like they do. And they just like stifle that down and they just like push through it. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I've had a couple really good conversations lately. The the guy we just had on is a a former Navy SEAL. And I mean, he's, you know, he's done some incredible stuff, but had a very similar story. He's like, man, it wasn't until I finally like recognized I need to talk to somebody. I need to get some help. I need to open up that I could finally start to like reach my true potential. Yeah. Um, and you know, so it's, it's cool to hear that like you've, you know, you've begun that process, but it's also cool to have this, I mean, incredible feat. Um, you know what I mean? That, that yeah, also it's, kind of, it's, like, it's a little bit of like a, a peak or a pinnacle, yeah. you know, it's like, it's a, it's a touchy, like, it's almost like a double edged sword. Cause like you want to be in tunnel vision like you, de- like you definitely want to get in the flow state and just like get shit done. Like I think you're definitely going to live a better life. If you, if you have a mentality of just like getting shit done, no excuses, like let's get out yeah. of here. But you can still have that personable, emotional, um, talk about your feelings. You can still have that human, like 
that human aspect to you, you but you, and you can do both. Just what does that balance look like? Right. And some yeah. might argue on you're like, Oh, like he was doing, he was in tunnel vision for like the first three years of his career. And that's why, look, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I, I definitely probably should have watched maybe the way I spoke to people or, or, you know, things I, I decided to do or whatever it is, but I needed yeah. that. That's like part of my story. Like that's, that's me personally. That's the, that's the, that's the life I like kind of went through. And again, I'm just building my story and like trying to figure it out like everyone else as I'm going along. And like, that was part of a growing process. And now I'm able to get on a podcast and talk to you about it. I'm able to like talk to humans out in the world that reach out and like, ask questions right. about mental health and whatever. I'm like, well, this is what I went through. This is how I think you should go about it. And this is what worked for me. And like, that's so massive and that you're just becoming wiser and you're just, you're like building your own story along the way. So like, it's not bad, but you can fix it and you are going to get smarter from it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and on that note too. So like, what are you like, you strike me as a person who's incredibly driven, obviously. Um, and clearly, you know, when you put your mind to something, it's going to get done. Like what sort of like routines or things are you incorporating in your life or, you know, your day to day or your week um, that you feel are kind of helping you live more optimally? Yeah. Um, wellness, fitness, health, 100 percent, probably the top priority in my life, keeping my body healthy. Right. Like God gave you one yeah. body. I'm going to take care of it as much as possible. Um, so that's big. Uh, working. I only work Monday through Friday until about 4 p.m., 5 p.m. I start at 10, go to 4. And like, yes, you know, awesome. I can choose and make my own schedule, but I also like worked hard to do that. And so like, I'm going to choose, like, this is the only time I'm going to work. And like my assistant, know it. anyone that works for our company knows it. Like, this is the times you can contact Devin and like, we can fucking work and go as hard as possible. Like it's a marathon. Like you better keep up because I'm calling you nonstop or sending emails out. Like we're getting shit done, but yeah. after that, guys, let's have a little balance. And then weekends, like definitely, definitely no work. You know what I mean? And so I yeah. think like having a fitness and health driven life, um, you know, having that balance with like work and like understanding it constantly, like making yourself busy, you know, with your constant to-do list. And, um, you can kind of like see quick, like I have a pretty big, like to do. Oh book. yeah. Look at this. Yeah, for, those, so, for those, for those who are listening. Yeah. His what three, three of your walls are a whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> three of my walls are whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, so like awesome. just constantly like jotting stuff down and like keep staying on top of it. And then also having purpose behind what you're doing. And so like the, mm. the big thing behind what I do is I love to help people. That's probably why I joined the hospitality industry at a young age. I just genuinely get, I don't know if it's a high or, or I just genuinely enjoy helping people like not getting anything back, not like not looking for something in return, just like, seeing the look on someone's face when you're like, you did something for a genuine reason is like the best feeling in the world. So I love doing that. I love helping out with charity. So all companies I'm a part of has to have like some type of charity and like, oh, it's awesome. yeah. And then like the CEO that, you know, I, I invest in or partner with or whatever. Um, I have to have to, I have to be able to have a beer with a guy or a girl. You know what I mean? We have to be right. able to go out and just like kick it for a sec. Cause like if we can't kick it for a sec and I can't, and like we can't enjoy each other's companies on downtime and how yeah. can I enjoy our company when we're freaking grinding and working and trying to build a company, you know, yeah. I, mean? like, I have my different values and like different things I look for in companies. Um, yeah. Can we, can we talk a little bit about what you're doing on the, on the venture side of the house? Because yeah. I mean, there might be a lot of folks who know you as like, Hey, the fitness personality, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Does these insane challenges. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, Monday through Friday, 10 to four, like you're, you're, yeah. you're working on other projects. Yeah. So up until about two years ago, I was like, I was training uh, clients and I was, I was like, uh, I was like their coach, not mm. only just from like physical, but also like mental business wise. And like, as I was in that, like probably two year grind of like nonstop training, um, you know, I played my cards, right. Took care of the right people was fucking hustling to make a session for like 4am and like going nonstop. Um, mm. and so like in that time I was just saving money, um, and, and trying to, figure out what I want to do with that and like invest. And then the other part of it was, you know, some of my videos on Instagram started to go viral and, you know, people were inspired by the workouts and all these things. So, um, that was cool because then brands started to come in and like recognize me. And so I started rather than me taking compensation from some of the companies, I would trade my posting and time for equity. And so, oh, so smart. Yeah. So I started like getting my foot in the door 
like two, three years ago with some of these companies. And now they're on the brink of, you know, being acquired. And so my head's now thinking for the next five, 10 year plan. And so as I've stepped out of personal training and, and coaching, um, I, it's now, I, st- I still have that in my back pocket, um, from like an educational standpoint and like understanding like what a trainer goes through and thinks about and like what clients look for. So now I can take yeah. like that, I guess if you want to call it research, um, over the time I was doing it and like in the industry and like in the trenches, I can now go to a company and be like, this will work or it won't work. And this is why it will or it won't. You know what I mean? And so I can actually like advise them on products that will work or won't work or branding or whatever. I definitely have a big passion in branding and marketing. Mm. Like I love understanding like top of funnel, how we're hitting a consumer, how we're taking care of them and then giving them a product at the bottom of the funnel and like making sure that product doesn't have issues. Um, they're a repeat customer. It can be implemented naturally into their life without them feeling like they, you know, got schemed on something like just being yeah. honest and transparent and like, I just love that, that funnel and like, just love like, like developing new products and like pushing new stuff out there and seeing how people like are attracted to it. So what we've done is, yeah, we have about 10 companies underneath us that we've invested in. Um, if, Hmm. if it's like, if it's a bigger check, then I'll form like an SPV, which is a special purpose vehicle. And we'll, we'll bring like creators, professional athletes together and we'll put in a bigger check size. Um, I always try to lead the round. Um, my fund does, you know, just to make it professional. But at the end of the day, yep. our deal flow is awesome. We have some amazing people in our network um, that are just constantly sending us deal flow and we can kind of rip through it. I think we had like 100 offers or so in just the month of January of like oh, different wow. companies to invest in. And all these companies are like really, really solid. It's just like what ones, you know, you're comparing yourself against 100 companies, like, you know, what, what ones are going to be top. So like we'll try to invest like – and like, I would say four or five, six companies uh, per quarter of okay. like, uh, yeah, and just trying to build it from there. And like the whole concept is that is, of that is we hope a couple of these companies are going to exit, you know, within the next 12 to 24 months. Um, and so start developing a fund now on how we can help build brands uh, even more. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's such a, a fascinating space. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, as you look, like you said, it, if you've taken the time, you've put in the work and you've built up a nest egg, I'm so interested in this. Someday I'm going to start like a finance podcast. But yeah. it's like, okay, where where can I put my money to get the best return? Yeah. And I think like the venture capital space, if you have access to it or if you've created access to it like you have, man, what a, what a cool space to play in. Dude, it's so fun. And like, this is what we, I love health and wellness anyway. So like you have a hundred health and wellness brands coming to you. You're, you're able to like, you're just, it's just fun. Like it's yeah. everyone, everyone in the health and wellness space, not to be biased is super driven is all right. has, has somewhat the same mentality, like has the same like vision of doing something. Most of them are super nice. Most of them want to work out. Most mm-hmm. of them, you know what I mean? Like, or you could have a beer with like, it's just a good balance. Like in this health and wellness space, Granted, you're going to have some bad eggs here and there, but sure. overall, like this industry is like super, super fun. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, you, you talked a little bit about the exomes. Um, what, what else? I mean, I have to imagine just based on everything we've talked about, like you're also thinking about like longevity, right? Not right. just peak performance today, but like, hey, how do I keep doing this? Like yeah. for me and, you know, what, what am I? 34? Oh, uh, you know, thanks, thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, you know, my, my whole thing is like, Man, I, I want to be as fit, as strong, as healthy at 44, as yeah. at 54, at 64. And like, you know, I, I see people who've maintained like incredible fitness into their 70s, 80s. So it's like, yeah. I see it's possible with everything that's going on in the space, um, you know, with regards to like research and developments. Yeah. I think there's a very real opportunity to make that happen. So for you, like, is there anything that you're doing or interested in um, yeah. that you're doing to kind of like improve your own longevity? For sure. Yeah. So there's a couple of things. One, breath work. Um, I was awesome. introduced into breath work a couple of years ago by this guy, Dr. Levery, uh, this girl, Renata, and they were introduced to me by like my mentor, Lavinia Erico, who founded Equinox. And so she, oh, wow. yeah, I worked really close with her. She just invested in our recent company, Arena, which is like a smart box. Um, and so like she introduced me to them for breath work and I went in and I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's like, like crazy breathing and you're doing it. But like, yeah. I did it for like a couple days and I started to see like a, honestly, like a difference. I'm like, I feel better. Like, I feel like I'm more alert. Like 
I, I'm breathing better, just like everything. I, my body just felt better. So I started implementing this thing called three point breath. And it's basically hmm. where you inhale for 15 seconds through your nose and fill up your lungs. You don't let any air out. And then you hold that breath for 15 seconds and then you exhale for 15 seconds. So it's a 45 second, um, uh, rep or whatever you want to call it. And yeah, and you can repeat it like three or four times, but it just helps like, it helps expand your lungs. It helps get your brain off of anything else that's going on in the world. And so that that part is really cool. Uh, the second part is gut health. Gut health is really, really important. And a ton of studies are coming out that like major diseases are uh, being formed from the gut. And so if you can mm-hmm. start taking care of your gut, then you could potentially um, prevent these like major diseases. So t- how to prevent, you know, how to, how to take care of your gut, prebiotics and probiotics. Um, mm. Prebiotics and probiotics feed off of each other and they need okay. one or another to actually be beneficial in your gut. And so that's really important. Um, and yeah, just like focusing on your gut health and whatnot. The third one is, and this is kind of like a testing one, but I'm starting to like it. And yeah. hopefully it's it's going to come out soon and you're the first person that I've ever told this to. But let's go. You know, you heard it here first, folks. Mushrooms and microdosing, I think are gonna oh. be, Yeah, I think those are gonna be the wave. And like I've been testing it out for the past like month or so. And boy, am I happy. I am the happiest human. I see everything more alert. I am more focused. Um, yep. I'm getting it done. I'm working out. Like I feel so good these last couple months of microdosing. I just invested in a company called Multiverse, which is a mushroom marketplace. And I think like that it's going to be the new space. It's 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 THC seven or eight years ago, I think, right now. And I think when psilocybin, which is active yeah. in, in mushroom, become legalized within the next 12 months, it's going to absolutely explode. And, and the best part about it is they are coming out with studies that um, are improving people's mental health. You know, and then yeah. what they're going through whether it's PTSD, whatever it is, like there's there's a ton of studies coming out on it right now. So I think that space is really interesting. Yeah, man, I, I completely agree. Um, it's it's so funny. There's a couple there's a couple publicly traded companies. I don't know why I'm going so finance on this. No, good. I like it. Um, there's a couple publicly traded companies who are trying to capitalize on that that I'm super interested in, and I actually just invested in a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, I you know I still have a full time job, so. Um, Let's let's just say hypothetically, if I were to have tried them, yeah. uh, I complete I completely agree, man. Like, yeah. it, it really is incredible, and I think the stigma um, is beginning to fade a little bit. Um, and I, I completely agree. Like, the research is starting to catch up, and there's just so many benefits yeah. uh, that that I I completely agree, man. I think that's such like a an interesting. Um, it is. Yeah, I don't you know space. It's just about to explode. No, I, I I agree, and I'll give you guys, I'll give everyone like one more book. And this book will, if you guys don't know about mushrooms and you want to learn about it, it's How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. Um, it's like right here. This How one. to Change Your Mind. Got it, Michael Pollan. Yeah. Awesome. We'll link to that. I'm gonna, re- yeah. I haven't read that yet, but I will. It's amazing, and it kind of just gives the background and history of uh, mushrooms, and you know how how they've just gone throughout history and whatnot, and you know kind of where they're at now. So. I definitely recommend that. Yeah. Oh, awesome, man. Well, dude, this this is this has been such a, a great conversation. Um, and I know you got a lot going on. For people who would like to uh, either follow you or, or find out more about what you're doing, um, where where can we direct them? Yeah, um, you can go to devinlevake.com. Um, that you know that has my app on there. Um, you know, you can like subscribe to our newsletter or whatever. Or if you want to know about you know new investments we have going on. Um, you can go to dmlholdings.com, Devin Michael Levake, dmlholdings.com, and you can kind of see our partnerships and whatnot's going on. And then obviously follow me on Instagram if you'd like. Uh, I just launched a YouTube channel as well. Awesome. And that's yep. Devin Levake, so I'll send you guys a link to that. But that that's kind of just, it's kind of what you and I just did, but, you know, on each trip that I go on or or whatever. So, yeah, there's there's a couple ways. dmlholdings.com, Devin Levake.com, Devin Levake on Instagram, or Devin Levake on YouTube would be great. Awesome. And I did, I, I watched a lot of those, uh, bear crawl training videos and, oh, cool. uh, I mean, <laughs> savage, just absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah. Uh, well, dude, this has been a lot of fun, man. And I think, you know, when you are ready to, uh, publicly announce that next challenge yeah, or yeah. after, whenever you do it, I'll be watching, man, but we would love to have you back at some point. Oh, we're going to do it. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, buddy. Dude, much love, man. Thank you.